him the bank loan just enough to keep your mama poor. Thought they could swipe her land. It's a big bank. It's too big. That's what she said. Now they can foreclose on Friday. So come hell or high water, get the money to the bank on Thursday. And then you are free and clear. David McKenzie's thriller Hell or High Water blev allerede omtalt som en stor Oscar-kandidat, og man kan godt forstå hvorfor. Ben Foster og Chris Pine brillerer som to texanske brødre, som beslutter sig for at røve de bankfilialer, der har drevet deres familie til fallitens rand. You want a little advice? Go see your boys and mom. You know you talk like me and gonna get away with this. I never met nobody got away with anything ever. Og Jeff Bridges er suveræn som altid i rollen som en spydig, men sympatisk og skabsindig sheriff, der håber på at fange brødrene, før han lige straks tvinges på pension. Jeg been here for a while. Long enough to watch the bank getting robbed. Been robbing me for 30 years. How do you manage to stay out of prison for a year? It's been difficult. Come stand up. Der er altså ikke blot tale om en gribende og hestblæsende heist men også et rørende drama om familie, forsømmelse og alderdom. Og så er filmen ikke mindst vanvittigt aktuel. Vi får et spændende indblik i det, der ligner USA's udkendsområde, hvor de almene borgere netop lades i stikken af både banker og politikere. All this was my ancestors land. The least folks took it. And now it's been taken from them. Except it ain't no army doing it. It's those sons of bitches right there. Og ligesom i flere af filmhistoriens bedste thrillers, er det også ofte her svært at se, hvem der egentlig er held og hvem der er slyngel. Movie TV fangede forleden instruktøren David McKenzie over Skype, og vi fik en god sluder med den skotske filmmager og hans amerikanske perle. There was something very interesting about this notion that it's a movie sort of about a, a nation or at least a part of the culture, a part of the nation that's sort of dying out or being left behind. And it's being told in a genre that's often been, you know, left behind or been declared dead. You know, the Western. I thought there was an interesting interesting notion in that, how that story factored in into the to the Western genre. Well, there are lots of it. it, it... A lot of the film is about a sort of, uh, 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 I guess, an elegy to, to, to the passing of uh, uh, of the old West, both in terms of the genre and uh, and I guess the life, you know. So it, 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 it's kind of appropriate that uh, that both the genre and uh, and the uh, the world it's describing have have a sort of similar uh, flavor in a way. And it's not just a Western; it's a bank robbery movie. Mm. It's a buddy movie. It's a, a you know road movie. Uh, you know, and a kind of family drama thing. You know, there are the advantages of, of, of having that is you can kind of smuggle in uh, some more serious themes uh, underneath that without, without it becoming a, a, a preaching uh, thing or, 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 or something that uh, that is heavy-handed. We were sort of fortunate and obviously worked hard to try and kind of bring these things together so that it feels like a whole. And the film is a, it's an entertaining film that's, uh, that, that plays a genre game but also is able to, to talk about contemporary America. Yeah, it was also interesting watching the film. I almost got, you know, a sort of understanding of why these people who were sort of being left behind, losing their livelihoods and their lives being impacted so much by the establishment and, and being ignored by the world around them, why they would lash out and elect a guy like Trump while also recognizing the paradoxical nature of the fact that he's one of the type of persons who put them there, you know. This is the, this is the irony of uh, <laughs> of the the American dream and all those kind of things in, is, is that there are plenty of people who in a way would would be prepared to vote against what would appear their own self interest uh be, because uh it, their aspiration is that in, in a few years time they're going to be like him yeah. and they're going to be successful and have uh, ha- have all the benefits but it's interesting because looking at the movie it's about such a clear moment in american history in american time it takes place in you know some of the most american of environments and it's sort of the most american of genres as well but it's it so it would be almost logical to assume that it's been made by an american filmmaker but of course you're a you're a scotsman you're an outsider looking in how has that you know has that outside perspective and i get asked that question a lot and it's a weird one because i i mean i think in many ways american cinema culture is a global culture. We, we you know, you, you're in Denmark, we're in Scotland. You, you, we're, we look at American films 
uh, almost as much as Americans look at American films. So, so, so it, it it didn't feel to me like a particularly hard step to to uh, embrace this American theme and this American genre. And, and I and I took it very seriously to try to assimilate, like you know, sort of become a, I said in an interview before, so a, 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 become an amateur American for the for the time I was uh, doing it, and to be as assimilated as possible, and not to try to 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 have a kind of uh, uh, outside objective perspective, but to, ha to but to try and embrace what what the world we were trying to describe was as much as possible. So it it was a uh, very much a choice for me not not to try and be an outsider. Although inevitably, uh, you know, I I uh, I am an outsider. Mm. And and as obviously there's a massive tradition of great American films being made by outsiders. You know, films by you know Polanski when he was doing stuff there and Billy Wilder and you know I mean you know, the, the, you know obviously America's a land, a land of immigrants anyway so so it sort of taps in you know yeah uh, one of the you know the best Scottish films uh, it arguably was you know made made by you know Dane breaking the way ah of that. course yeah 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 Jeff Bridges I mean he's of course he's amazing it's it's this fantastic combination of humor and strength it's sort of like I sat there feeling it's it's sort of a a perfect mix of his performances in True Grit and Big Lebowski in a way it was this perfect uh, combination of those a way of, that's a really lovely way of putting it and, and and that's very much what what we were what we were doing with the, with the film and, it, and it's interesting the, the script is feels a bit more serious in the film but particularly with Jeff and Gil but not, but also with everyone, we 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 were looking for for the moments of, of lightness and the moment and and the moments of you know not comedy because it was all coming from a reality and we didn't want it to to, to be a kind of wink film. But 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 it, but but looking for moments where where the characters come alive, where, where you just just where there's some fun to be had. Yeah. Uh, and 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 Jeff is very very tuned into that kind of thing, and 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 uh, his intuition is is strong, and he's a great improviser. So we, so the, all sorts of stuff was just sort of coming out, and it was delicious to be you know there involved with and witnessing this stuff kind of happening on on, on the day, which is very much what I tried to encourage it as a director, but but in the, you know in the hands of my great cast, and and obviously Jeff being the the older statesman of that, um, fantastic to see that happening. Mm. Yeah, when I retire, I'm gonna move Esme and me down to Galveston, buy a fishing boat. I'll live on that son of a bitch right at the pier. Oh, who knows? Maybe one of these bank robbers is gonna want a gunfight and I can dodge my retirement in a blaze of glory. Well, I've seen you shoot. Won't be much glory in it. <laughs> Of course, the two young actors uh, are also amazing. Like I have to say, I'm a huge Trekkie. I have been since birth, so I, I've, I've been a huge fan of Chris Pine in the Star Trek movies. But I guess it would be fair to say that he's unfairly he's regarded as just this sort of you know mainstream, middle of the road kind of actor. But in this one, he's just so amazing. And again, his his performance is so heartfelt. But again, like he hasn't really had the chance or the elbow room to showcase his talent in a way that he does. In I think he he will do now. Yeah. I think I, th I mean, he did a great job. He's he's a he's a very smart guy. He's a smart actor. I, I definitely want to work with him again. And I think you know, I, I, yeah, I think you're probably right that when you embrace a big franchise like that, it's very hard for people to kind of dissociate you from that. And uh, uh, and so you know, he's been doing a huge amount of varied work. He's been doing work on this, in the theater and all that. And you know, and, and 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 he comes from a family of actors as Jeff does. You know. Mm. Uh, it's inevitable, and if you know him at all, you know that that, that of course he's he's you know, he's got a far wider range than, than people normally associate uh, him with. But but because of the success, I guess of the, of, of of that that franchise, that gets forgotten, I guess. Yeah. But what what did you see in him? Well, what what made you think of 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 him in the first place? Well, it was really interesting because he 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 read the script and he and he he kind of campaigned it. To me, to try and to, to say yeah, yeah, and 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 I, and I met him, and and we saw eye to eye, and and it just it was like okay, great, let's do this, you know. It, and it, and it, it, but it, the initial kind of uh, impetus came from his enthusiasm and and his his desire to to play a character who is not the swashbuckling hero type, you know, is somebody who's buttoned up and uh, and and and. and Filled with kind of anxiety and uh, uh, you know self disgust and uh, having this plan that he's desperately trying to work out you know and someone who's 
who's sort of a, a, at the beginning a bit of a loser, you know. Um, yeah. And so it was kind of really interesting to take this guy who's incredibly good looking and incredibly, you know, you know, and 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 is quite a kind of you know glamorous kind of character to to, to tell a totally kind of dirty him up and, and and take all all of all of that sort of you know external charm away. Yeah. Uh, and Chris was incredibly bold about doing that, uh, which is great. You know, yeah. And uh, a great journey. And Ben Foster, who is an extraordinary actor, who really kind of like melts into his parts wherever whatever he does. And uh, you know, he put on ten years to 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 play the older brother and uh, put on weight, and uh, I just kind of went into all sorts of kind of things to 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 find that character. Him him and Chris just kind of had a re real real. <laughs> Gel and I think I mean I, you know I think Ben you know a lot of what Ben was doing it was at the heart of the movie. My first kind of first big relationship in 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 the journey of the movie was was with Ben and that and and the way that fed into the relationship with Chris and they've worked together was a huge part of it. Also, I have to ask about this amazing score by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis. Also, because I felt like with those warm, slow, lush strings, it was sort of like evoking also a music or the melancholy, the romanticism of the past. I hope I'm not sounding too pretentious, but I feel like, <laughs> not, you know, not, not like the bombastic action-packed scores you'd ordinarily hear in crime thrillers these days. So it's like wonderfully reflective of the mood uh, of the film. It's too big. That's what she said. It's no good. Nick and Warren are amazing guys. I just, just, it's just a privilege to kind of, you know, spend time with them um, and 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 to kind of, you know, be part of that creative process. So that was a, that was a, 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 incredible. There's something about the tone of their their general film work that fits in, that gives you emotional, you know, resonance, gives you power, but is not bombastic. Uh, it, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and it, it's kind of big but not grandiose. You know what I mean? And you're right about you know there is a sort of slightly nostalgic, achy feeling to it, which which hits the kind of vibe of the rest of the film. Yeah, it sort of reminded me just a little bit of Heat again. That that you know that notion of playing you know again the the borderline between hero and crook and also the the shootout you know also felt so visceral and real. It was one of the most the best you know depicted shootouts I'd seen practically since Heat. Was that a, an inspiration at all? No, it's interesting. I mean. I I don't know whether it's an inspiration. It was a, you know, a lot of the films that I that I that I took as inspiration were from an earlier period in American cinema than that in the seventies. But, but uh, um, you know, I'm well well aware of Heat, and I you know I do think that you know, the sort of collision between the good guys and the bad guys, and 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 the questions of sympathy about who you who you're rooting for, are, are, you know, their resonance is there. Um, uh, interesting. I, I know Taylor is working on a script with Michael Mann at the moment, so I want you know I, I wonder how much Taylor was influenced by that more than me. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I get the resonance. Like you said, one of the strengths of the movie it's that I'm sitting there at the end and I still don't know who I'm really rooting for of those two sides. That's always a sign I feel of a good movie where you you're left to think and. Uh... Well, it's nice to be allowed to do that because I think there was a time in American cinema where you weren't allowed to do that. Really, mm. not in anything that was a that was you know, had any chance of any commercial success. You had to kind of like tell the audience who was the good guys and who was the bad guys. And I feel it's a good thing that we've kind of maybe got over that and that we're allowed to make films that that, that are a bit more open ended and, and that that, uh, that that leave a few more questions for yeah. audience to think about when they leave the cinema and uh, and beyond. You know, so uh, I, I, that feels like. Good cinema to me, and, and and a lot of my favorite films, you know, have similar kind of openness, and it's great that that is that's being allowed again, as it were. Yeah. Love you, Toby. Mean it. Love you too. 